If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. This is Resident Evil Extinction, which, as you don't recall, is the third Resident Evil movie. Well, I don't know about that. This was the film that broke most of the hardcore fans away from the film series, as it was clear they were doing whatever Paul Anderson wanted to do and not following the games. So we were quite aware this was the third one, as we were stupidly actually excited for this thing. Also, this is supposed to fool you into thinking it's the first movie's first scene all over again. And I must admit, the doctors who created this reality did a good job, from putting the shower curtain in the exact same position to getting Alice to react the exact same way she did the first movie. Remarkable! It is the exact same footage from the original. They just removed that stupid-ass green filter and cut off some parts of the frame. But the scenes do differ, as in the original, they show Alice being knocked out from the gas, and in this one, they just show her tit- I, I mean, her reaching for her robe. You know how we know we're deep into a franchise at this point? They start playing the greatest hits record. Let's not begin the video being dishonest. They're showing clone Alice having a flashback because she's in the laser murder hallway. If they were playing the hits, they'd have at least shown something from the second. Alice jumps over the thing that can easily be ducked under. Or Alice jumps over the thing that can be easily jumped over. Arbitrarily placed Indiana Jones booby trap. Arbitrarily using the word arbitrary after being shown multiple traps at this point. Cool, secret door. My question is, where's the moving floor going in this enclosed space? A question Jeremy also asks whenever he stands in front of elevators. Also, 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 this place takes great pains in having a secret facility deep underground, complete with a secret elevator. But they leave clone corpses in a ditch a mere 20 feet away. Nobody will ask any questions if they see that. At this point in the series, most of the world is overrun by zombies. The underground facility is a safe haven for umbrella survivors. It has nothing to do with being clandestine and all to do with keeping the infected out. The virus didn't just wipe out human life. Lakes and rivers dried up. Forests became deserts. Yeah, but why? Why does the virus have the power to do that? This sounds a lot like Scar taking over the Pride Lands. I see you're strangely new to the Resident Evil series, so I'll explain. The T-Virus, in the games as well as these movies, has the power to affect plants. In the games, this resulted in the ivies in plants 42 and 43. In the movies, it made them wither and die. Do you think plants can't get sick? This is KLKB. We have seven people here. I guess the T-Virus wiped out all of humanity and dried out rivers and made forests into deserts, but somehow there are still people living, despite the catastrophic change to the ecosystem. Well, yeah, I'd expect some people to survive an extinction-level event. Not you, of course, but some people. Hell, there are people living in places like Phoenix and Pahrump today, and both those places could be confused for the set for The Hills Have Eyes. We will only reveal ourselves once you find out the baby is fake. It makes for a more satisfying robbery. But you're cutting out the context of the scene, though. The reason they waited for her to hold the doll was so that she could put away the weapon she was holding. It's easier to hold someone up if they're unarmed. Just ask the LAPD. What you got down there, Fizzy? All bad guys are rapists. Not all bad guys are rapists, but all rapists are bad guys. Or cats. The bones down here suggest these bandits have thrown people down this pit before. But who's responsible for getting the demon dogs back in their cages? Considering those bones were in and near the cage, it's clear they lured the zombie dogs with human victims. Hey, Carlos, this is Claire. LJ? Claire Redfield. Well, how can I help you? Adam? Sorry, campers. Character introduction through radio conversation. All right, I tried to let the last couple sins slide, but this was like 10 straight Jeremy points out things on the screen cliches. Fuck's sake, we have eyes, man. We can also see the things you see. Using antibodies from her blood, I will develop a serum that will not just combat the effects of the T-virus, but potentially reverse it. And that's why I've been cloning Alice and sending her into death mazes to reverse the effects of the T-Virus, somehow. It's amazing you can't keep up with this movie. You send the two previous films, so you should know Alice is infected with the T-Virus, but her body adapted to it and turned her into Wonder Woman. So, if he's able to reverse engineer what happened with Alice, he'd be able to turn everyone into Wonder Woman. Without the original project, Alice, progress has been difficult. As I recall, you let her go at the end of the last movie, when you could have simply recaptured her after her escape. We will never get an explanation as to why you did that either. The explanation was revealed in the last scene of that movie, where they showed they had control over Alice, a major plot point in this film. As is the case with Umbrella in the games, they were looking for a way to create a controllable superhuman to sell as a bioweapon. The only reason they lost control is because Alice has been avoiding their network. This meeting is adjourned. 
So why would you call a meeting in a boardroom if you're just going to be there in hologram form? Is this the only place equipped for hologram meetings? None of these movies ever bother to explain the hologram dynamic. I want to know how these guys, sitting in completely different places in the world, manage to angle themselves perfectly for a boardroom meeting like this. If I'm sitting one way at home, how does that translate to me sitting at a different angle in hologram form? How do I track someone like Dr. Isaacs as he walks around the room? And how does this simulation thing we saw before the scene began detect hologram figures? This seems like an obvious answer, but they are all at identical tables wherever they are in the world. And the simulation thing is a scene transition only for the benefit of the audience. It has no in-universe function or analog and is a play on the first movie's simulation thing. Seems quiet. Yeah, don't they always? I feel like both of these characters who were in the last movie probably already know that quiet doesn't equal safe. But that dialogue is for you, dumbass audience. Don't you mean LJ would be excellent at CinemaSins? Because the only one you should be directing this sin at is Carlos. <laughs> Man, if zombies could just learn not to growl their presence during an otherwise quiet approach, they'd have a better success rate. Considering they already took over the world, I'm pretty sure this is well within variance. Are you telling me this mirror is so clean that he didn't realize it was a reflection? I think they're trying to tell you that his anxiety is through the roof, given he lives in a world where zombies can pop out of nowhere and that he was just attacked by one. I don't think he was paying attention to how clean the mirror was, Jer. Also, why are there zombies just walking around in the dark hoping humans will one day show up? They apparently crave human flesh, but decide to hang out in these places just to be scary dicks. Why are you acting like this is your first zombie film ever? Since when do zombies actively hunt for people to eat instead of shamble around their general area until they are attracted by a stimulus? Zombie somehow bit through LJ's shirt, but did not tear it and it didn't bleed through. I like how you're saying this over footage of the big ass hole in LJ's shirt. This is incredible. The serum works. You've domesticated them. I can say this with confidence after seeing the zombie perform three successful tasks in one sitting. Well, technically, he's right. He did domesticate them, at least for a small period of time. I'm just saying this was proof of concept. Soup, cream of mushroom, and pork and beans. Be damned. How do you do that? Just one of my skills. It's a dying art, unfortunately. Shaking cans with no labels on them and figuring out what they contain is a dying art? Was it ever an art? Is this something the cavemen were able to do? Maybe he's joking, but that doesn't look like he's joking. Are you fucking serious? I want my perimeter up. And be sure to use a gas-powered vehicle when you do it. We have unlimited fuel around here. You said that like they have much of a choice. She ordered him to get it done quickly since a storm was coming and they are surrounded by zombies. Did you want him to walk? Still don't know how they're able to run high-tech like this without the world's infrastructure and very little fuel. And I'm very certain they aren't running this stuff on batteries. These are closed-circuit cameras. They don't need the world's infrastructure to run a CCTV system. Also, it's entirely possible they're solar-powered, which is a clean and renewable source of energy that will last for billions of years, Exxon Mobil. My senses have detected a peak in psionic activity. Because when Umbrella built me, they made sure that I could detect psychic powers, those being so common and all. He says in a movie about zombies based on a game series where psionic abilities are extremely normal. What the hell about any of this is realistic again? This entire swarm of bloodthirsty birds are all flying around the camp, but they don't swoop down in masses until these guys safely board the bus. I have a feeling Jeremy's going to gloss over Nurse Betty. I'd say the effects are almost on par with Birdemic as well. Maybe the moral is, don't do a movie with killer birds. I guess telekinesis allows you to turn a flamethrower, which has absolute limits on the amount of flame it can expel, and turn it into a giant flaming cloud of death. And I was right. They made such a big deal about number 87, and now she's dead. Glad we took the time to trump up her qualifications. Look, man, I know this movie is booty juice, but at least try to keep up. Umbrella is trying to replicate the process by which Alice bonded with the T-Virus. The reason this clone was a big deal was because they are getting closer to figuring out this process, as shown by her making it the furthest so far. What's your name? Kmart. That's where they found me. Do you have another name? Never liked it. Seemed like time for a change. Yeah, to Kmart. I'm sure that's much better than whatever name you had before. It sure beats where they found you. I mean, imagine being named Waste Management. I've got half a tank of gas. That's it. Chase? Ah, shit, I don't even have empty. I got enough for 100 miles. Tops. So, less than empty and can still drive 100 miles. That's pretty awesome, actually. Chase is driving a tanker. He's referring to the tank's payload as being empty, but the truck itself has enough for 100 miles. Unless, of course, you think tankers utilize the fuel supply they're hauling. She's right. Vegas, it's her only bet. Is that a Vegas joke? Like, if it were Seattle, it'd be Seattle sounds good to me? Or if it were Nashville, it'd be Nashville is music to my ears? Or if it were Vancouver, it'd be Vancouver will be a riot? This is one of those examples of thinking about something too deeply, which is rare enough to be amazing for you, actually. 
Luckily, there's not only a Vegas sign right here telling them it's only 89 miles away, but that's the maximum amount of miles any of these vehicles can drive. And here is why I did the Coraline video first, folks. I know you all remember that Jeremy said rounding up from 88 to 100 is a sin. Well... Also, this seems like an opportune time for Alice to use her psychic power to close the crate again, or throw the crate into the sun, or make the zombies spontaneously combust. But who needs psychic powers when you can just turn the movie into a shooting gallery? But the movie shows you there is a physical cost to Alice whenever she uses this ability, and it immediately places her on Umbrella's radar, something she's been avoiding for years. An Umbrella-controlled Alice is a far more dangerous opponent than the zombies, and since she's also a badass with guns, fists, and other weapons, this seems a more feasible option. The movie suddenly turns into the House of the Dead video video game. And I guess a little bit of the movie, too. You went with House of the Dead when Gun Survivor and Dead Aim were right there. Then shut her down. See? This is what I'm talking about. This is what happened at the end of Apocalypse. So how did she wrest control away from Dr. Isaacs in the first place? Later, the movie will show Alice resisting the control, but that's never explained as the reason why she was able to break it the first time. And nobody in Umbrella seems to have a clue about what happened before, either. Actually, this is not what happened at the end of Apocalypse. They allowed her to escape purposefully. And on that note, this film showing you that she can break free of the control is the answer you are looking for, numbnuts. They also show, in this scene, that a satellite is required to be in position for her to be controlled, and they'd have to know her position, something they'd only know if she used her powers. Jesus, this movie is not this hard to understand. It was written by Paul Anderson. Please don't go to space and show us the- God damn it. But that's the answer. You know what? Never mind. Why didn't you shoot? Not driving to Alaska. Luckily, nearly the entire convoy died so that a helicopter is now practical. Also, the plan is to steal the helicopter, which is flying to the Umbrella compound, which is surrounded by zombies. Rather than make the drive, which seems way safer, Alice would rather risk everyone's lives trying to get the remaining crew on the helicopter. When you think about it, this is actually the better option. Sure, you'd have to muscle through a horde of zombies, but driving to Alaska from Vegas requires you to potentially hazard bandits, dwindling resources that require dangerous stops, and vehicle maintenance, all of which can get you hemmed up in this universe. This only requires one dangerous mission, and then you're literally flying peacefully in the air and getting to your destination in hours, not weeks. Good thing we like a challenge. Or you can just use your psychic powers. That seems like something I'm thinking a lot. No, you're not thinking at all. She struggled killing birds. Now you're talking about a more numerous and larger enemy type. You're literally asking her to kill herself to save herself. While this explosion is impressive and everything, it doesn't blow up nearly the amount of zombies this movie wants you to believe, even in this shot. But when Alice is ready to hit the gas, the zombies are cleared out completely. But see, you manipulated this scene to make it look like there were no zombies as they drove in. The tail end of the scene shows there were still zombies near the explosion. I don't doubt Claire can fly a helicopter. It's just that the movie has never made that skill explicit. How is this not them making that skill explicit right now? Do you always need two scenes, one saying, I can do a thing, and then another showing them doing that thing? Doesn't simply showing they can kill two birds with one stone? Hell, what about this version of Claire Redfield suggests she can't fly a helicopter? I mean, her commanding a convoy, especially one that included Carlos, suggests military training at minimum. Alice steps on the floorboard and the secret elevator shaft magically opens four. Feels like if you were creating a secret elevator, it wouldn't be this easy to expose. And how did she make the elevator come up to her so that she could go back down? There wasn't a control panel in sight. It's very obvious that opening the floor summons the elevator. Otherwise, what would be the point of the door's opening besides being an easily avoidable hazard? I knew your sister. She was a homicidal bitch. Why does the artificial intelligence even need a sister? Is it because the first actress grew up and they still needed a little British girl to give exposition? Jeremy, I don't think the movie is actually saying the White Queen is the Red Queen's sister. Alice, good luck. Send help! They trap me inside this computer and make me pretend to be artificial intelligence. I need you to find a hacker named Wah! Whatever the hell that was. Crazy that this floor has such shoddy workmanship that Alice can stomp the floorboard and catapult this knife into the air. I guess you just forgot this woman has super strength. Oh yeah, my psychic powers that I will only use in the final battle. Which is the perfect place to use them. Seriously, have you ever played a video game? You save the high risk, high reward stuff for bosses. You would definitely be the guy that uses a master ball on an Oddish. Sure, you've sliced him. You've psychic powered him through a wall. But let's see if kicking and punching works. Super strength. Alice clone next machina. Also, how did clone Alice even know to get up, go to the computer, and stop the killer laser in the first place? How does she know what keys to press? Oh my god, Alice is a Mary Sue. How are you only now questioning this stuff after two movies of her demonstrating she has intimate knowledge of Umbrella's technology and facilities? I swear, when it comes to sequels, you take stupid pills and just forget all the shit you saw previous. Research will continue under my 
personal supervision. Oh, you won't have to wait that long, boys. Good at the conference room to have an extra chair ready for any asshole who might want to tap into this hologram meeting. You mean like Isaac's chair? You know, because this is his facility, something you saw earlier? Scratch what I said in the last sin. This dude takes stupid pills while watching a single movie. I'll be damned. LJ, you sneaky son of a bitch.